Hey guys, it's Mikey's Mind. Welcome back to my channel. Um, this is part two of a two-part video um, discussing little women and slash good wives. Um, I've done it in two parts because when I read Little Women, um, I sort of needed to get my ideas for volume one down quickly on video. And um, also in the UK, sometimes they're published separately. Um, when I was younger, I had a copy that was just the first volume. Um, and so my reading experience finished with um, Beth pulling through, for example. And so I found some confusion online about sort of when does Beth die, does Beth die, and, um, and, and among other things. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked already, but I'm going to discuss part two, um, good wives. The girls, um, the women are older, uh, married and traveling and getting jobs and careers and children. And um, I'll discuss all of that in this part of the video. And I have to say, um, I've really enjoyed reading the book. Um, it's quite a long one. Um, you know, it, it, classics, I mean, as classics go, I think this is more of a readable one. It's definitely more accessible and, and it's not. I think the characters are so fully realised that when you jump between perspectives um, or different focus, you know, on different women, uh, different sisters, it's, it's, you can still follow. It's not, it's not as though you're, you're being taken off on a huge tangent. Um, the chapters are really quite sort of self-contained. So yes, you may be off in Europe um, with Amy and Laurie briefly, but you're never too far from home. They use letters, um, correspondence to sort of keep you never too far from the March house. Anyway, um, the book opens with sort of this Meg sort of enjoying wedded, bl wedded bliss. Um, they're sort of making the home and uh, enjoying sort of setting up and like I say, enjoying the, the beginning of their marriage. Laurie's back from college and we learn that uh, Beth has never been the same since her bout of scarlet fever that she, she managed to fight um, earlier in the uh, novel. And um, we see uh, Jo, um, she sort of, I think she defines herself as sort of unlovable and Jo's character goes on this incredible journey um, of sort of self acceptance or she has to sort of learn to love and learn how to be loved. She's quite guarded. Um, she softens as a result of the second part of the novel. She manages to sort of contain a lot of her sort of what she'd call boyish habits um, whilst maintaining all of her personality. But early on in Good Wives, um, Laurie sort of says that Joe will be next. Joe will be married off next. And Joe says, me, don't be alarmed. I'm not one of the agreeable sort. Nobody will want me. And it's a mercy for there should always be one old maid in a family. She's almost sort of adopting this role of like, sort of literary spinster I think she calls herself at the end. I don't like that sort of thing. I'm too busy to be worried with nonsense and I think it's dreadful to break up families so. And you sort of sense that Jo hasn't really forgiven Meg for, for going off and starting her life away from the home. What I found interesting, um, I'm going to read from my phone here, um, I found it interesting to see the girls are willing to challenge themselves but we see them as still quite fragile. They're passionate, high spirited but still sensitive. Um, there's a sort of, I've put here a botched fate. There's a sort of party of some sort. Um, I don't have a strong memory of that now that I read this note, but um, I remember that there's, it's not being defensive, but it's it's wishing to please, wishing to succeed and trying not to let your um, pride or your, your emotions run away when it, when it goes wrong. And we also see that with Joe's uh, mixed uh, literary criticism. She knows that she needs her critics and it can often reveal things that she may never have thought. Um, things that were good people might love, things that she thought were okay people don't and so you learn. And she knows she needs that criticism but it's always difficult to, to swallow when you've worked so hard. But I've put here that the um, I think Good Wives really comes into itself with the story of um, unrequited love between uh, Joe and Laurie. Um, it, it's it's really good. It is really well written, and you're even at the even right towards the end. You are constantly sort of being thrown by the narrator between Laurie's going to change his mind. He's going to keep fighting for Joe, or no, he's given up now. He's going to move on. He's going to write a letter and confess everything. And, and so you're constantly backwards and forwards. Will they? Won't they? Um, I think for the most part, Joe is really clear um, in what she wants and what she thinks should happen and who and what she thinks Laurie should be. Um, she also knows what she wants for Amy and I think I think she's genuinely being honest with herself. Um, and it's fascinating towards the end when she, she she's let Laurie go but she says that 
her mum, I think, says at one point, I was worried that because of how you are at the moment, lonely and, and hungry for something, uh, that it would have been easy to say yes. And I think I said in my previous video, it would be easy for Joe to give in and, and sort of settle and accept Laurie, uh, even though she knows it's not right. She'd rather have him as a friend. And that brings us to uh, Professor Bear. I've put here um, his name, Bear, Bear, Bear. In the book, it says that it's um, pronounced somewhere between beer, the drink, and bear, the animal, um, in a way that only uh, a German accent can achieve. Anyway, Professor Bear, uh, mature, masculine, intelligent, gentle, paternal, and diffident. Um, I thought he was a really interesting character. Um, in some ways, he's a bit too good to be true. Um, but... Yeah, I don't suppose he's without his flaws, but we never we don't need to see them, perhaps. But his virtues and his values um, definitely outweigh um, anything we're not sure of. There's no doubt in Joe's mind. And I think, he, you know, his um, relationships with people, they talk about him at the end. When he, when he comes to the March House at the end, they talk about his ability to walk into a room of strangers and, and instantly make friends. Um, or he could he's a stranger that could knock on someone's door and instantly be welcomed in. Um, into the home so he's got a lot of charm and a lot of charisma and gentle sort of masculinity he's in control of situations but he's not dominant or domineering he's 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 sure of himself and, and he's a bit older and he's and he's he's mature and so you compare naturally you compare and contrast him to Laurie and I think Joe discovers what she deserves and of course I must discuss um, Beth's battle uh, I, I said on Twitter, I think I said in the previous video, uh, there's there aren't many characters that I'm rooting for quite like Beth. Um, I talked about Nell in the old Curiosity Shop, and there's something about these these small, frail and ill and, and incredible young women that just just deserve better. And you wouldn't wish it on anybody, but least of all Beth. And anyway, she sort of comes to terms with her lot in life, what her destiny is, and and the role she must play. The path she must take and yes she's having to take a journey sooner than anyone would like but it must be so and and, and her job is to retain who she is remain remain as beth um and help everyone around her come to terms with what she already has and it's great writing really um beth's secret chapter 13 when joe came home that spring she'd been struck with the change in beth no one spoke of it or seemed aware of it uh, for it had come too gradually to startle those who saw her daily, but to eyes sharpened by absence it was very plain, and a heavy weight fell on Joe's heart as she saw her sister's face. It was no paler, and but little thinner than in autumn, yet there was a strange, transparent look about it, as if the mortal was being slowly refined away, and the immortal shining through the frail flesh uh, with an indescribably pathetic beauty. Joe saw and felt it, but said nothing at the time. And so Joe realizes that she's been away and so she can see the change but no one around beth no one everyone that's been around beth hasn't really realized and so she i think she says she teaches herself not to hear and not to see or something like that and she's decided to not block it out but just try and manage and accept what's happening without upsetting the apple cart too much in the home and joe and beth have incredible dialogue they have incredible interaction throughout both volumes one and two um it's some of, I think it is probably the finest writing in the book. So there's this famous quote, um, Joe and Amy are, are um, Joe and Beth are discussing uh, the illness. Beth, you must get well, Joe says. I want to, oh so much, I try, but every day I lose a little and feel more sure that I shall never gain it back. It's like the tide, Joe. When it turns, it goes slowly, but it can't be stopped. And so there is a sort of acceptance, really. Um, she's just having to support Joe in joining her in that. And this bit here um, absolutely broke me. It says, um, I only mean to say, this is Beth talking, I only mean to say that I have a feeling that it never was intended I should live long. I'm not like the rest of you. I never made any plans about what I'd do when I grow up. I never thought of being married as you all did. I couldn't seem to imagine myself anything but stupid little Beth trotting about at home of no use anywhere but there. I never wanted to go away and the hard part now is leaving you all. I'm not afraid, but it seems as if I should be homesick for you, even in heaven. And it's awful because you realise that when Beth crosses over, um, she fears being alone and she fears misses, missing them. And so she's almost punished in life and death in that respect. 
a very tragic character. And I want to talk about um, Meg and uh, Brooke. Uh, specifically, Meg sort of tackling the trials and challenges of parenthood, learning as she goes and using advice and support around her. Her mum's quite wise and gives her great advice, really, as far as letting Brooke play a part. She says she can't... I think it was the mum. Or was it their mate? I can't remember. Um, she's told to let him in the nursery. Do not lock him out of the nursery. If you want him to be a part of these children's lives and look after the twins and, and help raise them um, and support you in doing so, then you must allow him. You must encourage him and teach him and learn together. And she does. And, and there was an incredible bit where the... the one of the i think it's demi i think it's the boy really being quite naughty and just defying just just being a kid just being a, being a toddler getting out of bed wandering around chatting away thinking they know best and 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 just really causing a little bit of chaos between between mother and father and yeah she worries that he'll be too harsh he worries that she'll spoil them and she'll have a, you know he worries that his wife will have a terrible time in raising them because she's been too soft but then there's this magical moment where he proves himself and yeah, I think he just gets the toddler to sleep and uses his words and his, his time and his patience and gets result, results. And yeah, I thought it was really quite good to see the realities um, of new married life and, new, and, and raising babies. I want to read a little bit from a poem um, by Joe and it's called My Beth. It's just stanza two that I want to read. Um, oh, my sister passing from me out of human care and strife. Leave me as a gift those virtues which have beautified your life. Dear, bequeath me that great patience which has power to sustain a cheerful, uncomplaining spirit in its prison house of pain. Yeah, so to watch watch Joe take as much as she can from Beth's passing, um, I think it changes Beth's life the most. We, 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 I think it changes Joe's life the most. I mean, we, if we were to hear, I think Joe says at one point that she compares... Joe compares her own pain to what her mother must be enduring and uh, Joe recognises that Mommy's pain must be beyond all of theirs and perhaps their father's but you don't know, you don't hear it, you don't see it and they don't write it down. And as I begin to wrap this up um, I want to talk about the book's sort of self self-awareness and its sort of collective impact like it, it talks about we and it refers to itself uh, and breaks that fourth wall a little bit but but i think it is just self-awareness um it plays with that self-awareness a little bit so i'll give you some examples and, and that'll explain what i mean um talking about joe uh she says now if she had been the heroine of a moral storybook she ought at this period of her life to have become quite saintly uh, renounced the world and gone about doing good in a mortified bonnet with tracts in her pocket but you see joe wasn't the heroine she was only a struggling human girl like hundreds of others and she just acted out her nature being sad, cross, listless or energetic as the mood suggested. So she's almost, it's like, you know, if Joe were in a storybook, Joe would do this, etc. But but Joe's not in a book. I mean, she is, but there's that fourth wall. But it's sort of, it's trying to make Joe and every woman sort of character, uh, making her experiences applicable and realistic and saying, look, she's not a character. Um she she faces these challenges and trials she must manage her personality her behavior her dreams her wishes her, her regrets you know like we all do and i think alcott wants the girls to be so real and i think when you look at their confusion in society um at parties things like that their anxieties their their self-consciousness their fears their desire to play and just be free and, and and careless and carefree um death and children i think alcott succeeds in making them real women uh she's and, and this use of we i think it makes the book a collective experience it says um it's highly virtuous to say we'll be good but we can't do it all at once and it takes a long pull a strong pull and a pull all together before some of us even get our feet set in the right way so alcott sort of alerting the reader you know these are challenges we all must face here's how we can do it and so writer and marmy the character are, are never too far from each other i think i think the book is really satisfyingly concluded and beth is never far out of people's thoughts but 
at the same time, her death is never allowed to sh overshadow the future and, and the, the, the little miracles that have happened with, with the children. Um, there are fears around one of the children, and, 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 but it's never, it never darkens the day. It never ruins the moment. And so you're, you're encouraged. These women are encouraged to live and experience things and try to overcome challenges, create challenges for themselves, manage relationships, retain the family home and the atmosphere. And, and so, yeah, I, I could talk even more, but I won't. Um, it's a fantastic book. There is no question um, in my mind why it's on this list and, and it's endured. And I can see why so many readers have enjoyed it around the world. And, and yeah, it is, for me, it's one of the most timeless and enduring classics. It doesn't lose much at all. I mean, there is so little in here that age is aged. Um, yes, sort of dress and costume, and but truly the, the virtues and values that it promotes are timeless and important then, now and forever. So um, I really, really enjoyed it and I've really enjoyed talking about it. And I hope if you've watched part one and part two to the very end, thank you so much. You must love Little Women um, as I do. So thank you. And um, yeah, there are, you know, I've said it before. If there are more like this in the top 100, then um, I'm really going to enjoy this project. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, do leave me a comment and I will see you soon. Take care.